Welcome to this episode of ACG's Growth TV. I'm Katie Mulligan, Content Director for ACG's Media Group. Today's conversation is going to focus on how technology intersects with human capital management. It's brought to you by Aspire HR, which offers clients valuable HR tools that provide real-time insights into what's happening with their employees and why. My guests are Kevin Chase, CEO and President of Aspire HR, and his client, Deanna Samaha, Senior HR Director for Learning and Culture at Blue Triton Brands. They are here today to talk about the HR issues that come with rapid growth and M&A that technology can help address as well as an implementation that Aspire HR and Blue Triton are working together on currently. Kevin and Deanna, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Katie. So Kevin, I wanna start with you. Can you tell us what you're hearing from clients when they first approach Aspire HR? What are some of the business challenges that you're being asked to help with? Yeah, I think the, the conversation has changed a lot in the last 24 months with uh, the dynamic and and just in general uh, across the world of recruiting, of talent, the emphasis on uh, agility and and the need for systems to enable agility uh, across uh, an organization. So we're we're really seeing the conversation shift more towards how do we make sure we're attracting not just the best talent in a specific geography, but globally. How do we make sure that we're retaining our talent uh, with better experience? How do we ensure that we're leveraging the best innovation out there, uh, whether it's artificial intelligence, uh, advanced analytics, um, and, and other advanced technologies to make sure that this game, this um, competition for attracting, retaining, and motivating the best talent is, is really becoming a strategic advantage. And, and so that's a, a lot of what we're focused on is how do we ensure that we're bringing that to our clients in a way that's cost competitive and quick uh, so they can realize the benefits as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Indiana, do those issues you know, resonate with you and, and Blue Triton? I know you're within a, a fast growing organization and recently completed an acquisition. So I'd love to hear um, you know, kind of what you're facing in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. I think first and foremost, with respect to agility and our ability to be able to secure the talent through um, whatever means you know we're using or employing from a tool perspective and with our talent acquisition team, but it really does extend beyond that because it's not just securing the talent, it's being able to have systems that work and connect um, with ease that we can take that associate from the time that we acquire them all the way through developing them and continuing um, their career in the organization from a developmental perspective. Um, And in the past, we haven't always had systems that are fully integrated that really truly work together and were cohesive. Um, And what we're seeing so far with our transition um, is that we're we're going into systems that can truly connect with one another. That makes everyone on our end internally um, have the ability or provides the capability to be more agile. Um, and respond to not only being able to secure that talent, but hopefully retaining that talent in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and Kevin, can you expand on that at all? I mean, Deanna touched on uh, the systems. Um, Talk about technology and the role that it can play in in addressing some of the the human capital issues we've been talking about. Yeah, let's let's talk for a minute around Blue Triton specifically. I think it it helps to to just use uh, what Deanna and I are working on together as a case study. Um, They... We're a part of a much larger organization with Nestle previously before the acquisition um, as part of One Rock Capital's uh, acquisition last uh, spring. And they had a big challenge, which is uh, we need to transition to all new systems. We had 49 different applications that were all a part of the HR ecosystem. And we needed to replace many of those and move them to new platforms that would enable them to operate with more agility, create a better employee experience, and to do it as quick as possible as part of this transition to to their new independent standalone environment. So that started literally last spring, so only eight months ago, and and we're going live this weekend. Um, So we will not only be going live with all new systems and and then transition in some of the existing, but we're simplifying and standardizing the footprint at the same time. So it's gonna lower the overall cost to run IT in a significant way that frees up dollars that the business can then put towards other parts of their strategy. They're going to have more agility with the new environment where they can make changes quicker. They can be more responsive, more dynamic. And we've already seen that we're able to make changes now in less than half the time that it was taking before in a way that they can be ahead of the game instead of reacting. Um, It also, and we've just proven this in the last couple of weeks, a, a small acquisition that was just completed 
we were able to fully integrate the employees, the required functionality um, for this acquisition in a matter of weeks um, so that they are fully integrated and, and the transition happened seamlessly um, in a way that would have be, been very difficult in the old systems. And our goal was not just simply to replace, but it was really to transform and to leverage best in class technologies with SAP and workforce software with advanced analytics and, and new artificial intelligence and capabilities that can really elevate uh, the Blue Triton brand company uh, in the talent game, the ability to attract better talent, to retain them, to leverage learning tools in a way that can develop their people um, in a way that they hadn't been able to previously do, uh, to, to provide technologies in a way that could create a better employee experience. And that's what we've been focused on in every area. It's how do we enable that transformation? How do we do it in the most efficient way possible? How do we give the new company this ability to leverage technology for agility so that as they acquire new companies, they can do it quickly and efficiently and consolidate. And, and from a consolidation perspective, we've seen this incredible return on investment already starting to unfold, where we've been able to reduce their footprint of systems from that previous footprint of 49 applications down to almost half of that. Now we're at around 26 applications. We're much more standardized, a lot more consistent. And I think from a, both from a technology and from a business perspective, all parts of the business are now going to experience things in a more consistent, more streamlined, more efficient, really more digital manner than they had before, where previously it was a lot more manual. Mm -hmm. And Deanna, I would love to hear your perspective here. I mean, this is a huge undertaking. So can you talk about what this experience has been like internally? Um, it's been a really, truly a fantastic experience. And I realize I'm saying that leading up to our biggest portion of the go live this coming weekend. But as Kevin shared, you know, we started this journey with 49 systems that were clunky at best. And that's probably the easiest word to fall back on when I think about our systems in the past or technically currently what we're using. And if you think um, of even just in your mind, a visual of a spaghetti diagram, it was probably the most chaotic spaghetti diagram you'd ever see if you think about how our systems worked in the past. Very clunky, certainly not one-stop shop. They were in a variety of different places, often with different, you know, certainly different logons, different ways to access and just pure inefficiency from the get-go. I think all well intended from um, the entity that previously um, owned our division. Um, but at the end of the day, there's something to be said for technology and being able to bring everything together and create um, the agility, which enables really everything else that we, we touch. Um, and starting from the talent acquisition piece, going through, as Kevin mentioned, the development of your associates, the learning piece and everything else. We're really excited to see everything come to fruition. We've had one go live so far um, through this project, and that was specific to recruiting and onboarding. We made that transition in October and really fairly seamless. You're always going to have a few bumps in the road. Um, we've, we've been able to navigate through those and in full force and effectively um, we've transitioned to um, that new platform. Um, but this coming weekend is when really everything else goes into play. Um, and very excited to see that happen because we truly know what that will bring us as an organization and more importantly, what it will bring all of our associates. Um, and they may not even realize while they're working within the different platforms and touching things like everything that happened in the background to get to be able to use what they'll be using in the future. Um, but that's the exciting part. They really shouldn't realize that, right? It should be completely seamless for them. It should be easy to access, easy to use. Um, they should walk away with a great associate experience. And that's what we're fully anticipating after go live. Mm -hmm. And I want to end with a, a question for both of you. I mean, having gone through this, is there any advice you'd give to other operators who, you know, are, are going to undertake a similar process and, you know, hope to get their op organizations to a place where Blue Triton is now? Maybe Kevin, you want to take that one first? Yeah, I'll, I want to give Deanna and, and uh, the senior leadership, Andrea Green and, and other members of the Blue Triton team, a, a ton of credit because uh, we work with a lot of companies. Uh, we have 18 different client go lives or projects in flight right now. And I will tell you the Blue Triton organization and their vision is, has been critical to, to what we've done and where we're going. Um, they've got a very clear sense about what they want the organization to look like how they want systems and technology to play an integral role in really elevating the capabilities of the company. They know the talent and the retention, the acquisition, the development of their people is absolutely top of priority list for them. And that's enabled us to make decisions that are very aligned with a vision, right? So we're not just simply tactically replacing systems. We're committed and, and really driven to achieve a long-term vision. 
And I think that simplified some of the process over the last eight months to get us here. Um, if you think about you know, many other uh, projects that are trying to do this level of work, it's, it's not uncommon for this scope to take two to three years um, because of its complexity. For us to achieve this with Blue Triton in eight months is a lot of, of the credit goes to them and their ability to make decisions, commitment to a consistent vision, and, and us leveraging best-in-class technologies across the board. Um, it, it's really enabled us to move efficiently through a process that a, a lot of times, like I said, it, it can be a struggle, and, uh, and we've appreciated the partnership. Mm -hmm. And Deanna, anything you'd add there or, or other tips to help other companies kind of get through this process as quickly as you guys have been able to? Yeah, absolutely. I think you have to look both internally and externally. So let me explain what I mean by that. Internally, it's not only the senior leadership support, which I will tell you in our case has been um, incredible. Um, also the support of our private equity partners. Um, Kevin mentioned Andrea Green. She's been extremely resource resourceful through this whole process and um, very easy to work with and ensure we, you know, had the tools and resources and support and everything we needed to go through this process and um, with the clear vision and goal in mind or goals in mind as, as we went through it. In addition to the senior leadership team, though, it's, it's everyone else, you know, within the HR community and our business leaders and key stakeholders that we're working with to be very supportive of recognizing that in many cases we'll run parallel paths. And there's been a lot that's been asked of the business to give back to us in terms of information in order to effectively um, create, configure, design everything that we, we saw within that vision to make sure that that would come to fruition. Um, so that internal support across the board was absolutely key. Externally, it's the relationship that we have with Aspire HR. So the collaboration from day one, the continued partnership, the working through the challenges. And you know, to be quite honest, we've had some tough days. We've had to make some tough decisions. They've been very effective um, partnering with us, reminding us at times, probably more so early on, that it's okay to let go of things that you may be holding on to from the past. Um, we had been with Nestle for a very long time. That's really all that we knew. And the importance of being able to look ahead, learn from Aspire HR and their SMEs in terms of what is industry best practice and getting us to focus on not just continuous improvement, but you know, good, better, best, like how do we really get to where we need to go to fully leverage everything that we were um, pulling into our organization and would be able to use for our associates for years to come. So both internally and externally, those components were critically important um, and really needed to work together to um, get to where we're at today. So we've been focused today a lot on, on HR, but can you each talk about how this fits within your larger enterprise transformation? Yeah, absolutely. I'll jump in and, and share first. Um, it, this isn't just about the HR transition within the organization and the move from a shared service model to being able to independently stand up all of our own systems. As an organization, um, this has been a complete transition. So our ISIT team members as well um, are facing something similar in terms of transitioning everything within their bucket, if you will. Um, into the new world of Flu Triton. Um, they have been incredible partners to work with. Um, obviously, they have a vision that's you know forward thinking as well in terms of everything that needs to get done within their systems. But clearly, as I mentioned earlier, the internal support is really key and um, their internal support of all the steps that we were taking within the human capital management project um, was definitely needed. And I would tell you definitely delivered from our CEO, Tim Howes, to our my project partner, Mike Garcia, to many members on the team that help from um, any myriad of activities that we've done within this project to make sure that we can go to not only the go live that happened in October and being successful with that, but as well as the go live that's upcoming this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll just add to that. Um, you know, when you think about what Blue Triton is uh, is tackling, and, and it's exciting, I think, for if I was in Tim's role as a CIO, they are transforming several hundred applications and, and business processes and working with finance and supply chain and all the other parts of the enterprise to enable every area to really elevate what they're doing and how they do it and bring more agility. HR is the first in the wave of those system go lives will be the first one with, with all of our systems go live uh, you know, in the next week. All those other systems will be going through their transformation over the next year. But I think, you know, to Deanna's point, it's been an awesome partnership uh, between IT and the business. 
And from an Aspire perspective, we're not just the systems integrator uh, and the partner with SAP and Workforce Software with uh, Blue Triton, but we're also their long-term IT partner uh, as we'll be running their AMS BPO organization long-term. And, and we're excited about that. We'll be running payroll, we'll be managing and monitoring all their systems. And again, all that is in partnership with IT. And, and it really has been a, a terrific partnership from all, all sides. Mm-hmm. No, thanks for that. I think that's helpful context for kind of positioning how HR fits within um, the broader transformation underway within the organization. We'll close there for today, but Kevin and Dean, I I really appreciate your time and for joining me on Growth TV today. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you, Katie.